Barely 24 hours after the People's Democratic Party opened the sale of nomination and expression of interest form for the 2023 general elections, the Northeast Business Forum has purchased the form for former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Speaking shortly after receiving the presidential form, Atiku said that in 2018, some young men contributed money and bought a nomination form for him and that he was emotional about it. He added that the challenges before Nigerians are enormous and that its unity is threatened. He stated that the economy and security were in bad state, adding that the challenges require the unity of everybody within the country. Well, joining us to discuss this is Babashala Digbuye, a political analyst, and Dayo Kayode, a political technocrat. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. Great. Um, Thanks for having me. Great, great, great. Um, Babashala, let me start with you before I go to Mr. Kayode. Uh, this is not the first time the vice president has been vying for this office. Um, he, he's run for this office many times, and again, uh, he's throwing his hat into the ring. In fact, one of the first persons to pick up this form. Even though many others who have uh, you know, indicated interest within the party are still consulting, he seems to uh, have put his foot forward. I remember the video that was trending uh, when he was asked if he was certain he would be able to pick this ticket up. He did say that, uh, he did answer saying, um, when has he never gotten the ticket? Now, this has raised a lot of concerns for people as to the... Um, the internal democracy within the People's Democratic Party. But let's talk about the man, Atiku Abubakar. Okay. Um, thank you once again. Atiku Abubakar actually has been contesting for this position since 1992 under the platform of Social Democratic Party. And he lost to Moshu Dabiola that time. Then in 19, in 2007, from 2007 to date, he has been trying to contest for this position. Being the former number two man in Nigeria, um, he has the experience to contest for the position that is a qualified person. They have been a uh, Nigerian, been, uh, 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 been the position and he has the understanding of now how Nigeria runs. But the main question is, will he be able to deliver being, as a president? And uh, for contesting for this position for the past uh, 1993 up to this time, that we are talking of about 29 years ago. So by next year, it's going to be 30 years that Atiku Abubak has been buying for this position. The question now is, has it always been, uh, uh, um, been revealing his uh, political uh, manifesto? I did the same thing that he has been talking about. Has he been able to upgrade himself? And another question that we have is, looking at his age, by this time next year, um, by the time we'll be contested the election next year, Atiku Abubakar will be about 76 years of age, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, which about 76 years of age. So at 76, with looking at the antecedent of uh, the present uh, president who came in at 75 or 76 too, looking at the age and what is happening under him, we remember how this man spent more than one year outside Nigeria for medical attention. Because at that age, there are a lot of things that happens to people who are over 70 years, medical attention. So will the man be able to deliver at 76? Mm. Is a question that I cannot answer. I depends on the, that, that depends on all Nigerians to determine if he's able to, uh, he'll be able to deliver at 76. For, don't forget, he's going to spend four years. That means at the age of 80, the man will still be president. Let us look at all the people who have been president in the country, in different countries, not only in Nigeria now, in different countries that are over 70 years of, years of age. How many of them have been able to perform very well or have been able to Well, you have a, Joe Biden. You have a Joe Biden in the US. Don't you think he's doing a great job? Don't forget, the inflation in the U.S. has created under Biden. And a lot of African Americans are actually complaining about him now, most especially in the aspect of the economy. And they are also blaming him also uh, in respect of what is happening in Ukraine. So a lot of things, although the president has a final decision, but the people attached to the president also has a role to play. 
But as the president, the final decision lies with him. Whatever you do at that time is what happens to the country. Yeah. So whether Biden is 80 years or, eight or 90 years, the question is, has it been able to supersede the, uh, the last president of the United States? Uh, big, but what, what, what we're talking about, Hachiku, let, let me go to Daya Kayede. Mr. Kayede, I heard you trying to interject, but then my question is, mm. my question is, um, oh. um, the former vice president recently has been making a lot of statements. He did say that um, if, if the PDP does not pick up the, or does not win the elections come 2023, he and those who are elder statesmen um, in the party will retire, and that means the PDP might fail and wrap up in 2023. He also did say that um, um, that the, he, he talks about his age, that he will retire uh, in no time, um, you know, from politics come 2023, if, again, yeah, he's unable to pick that yeah. ticket. So yeah. he's making a lot of statements about his age, which, which a lot of people look at, but should we be considering his age? Again, I want to throw this in. The president that we have in power now, President Muhammad Buhari, uh, um, has been one of, in fact, the only person who has always wanted to be president. Four times he tried to be president. And finally, he got the chance. But then Nigerians are, are looking at themselves, wondering, why did we even vote for this man? Because if you were so eager yeah. to be president, mm -hmm. you should have been able to give us something to hold on to. So if we have another person oh, like gosh. President Buhari being so eager for office, should we again throw our weight behind that kind of person? Okay. Th thank you for the array of questions you have asked me. And I'll be picking them one after the other. But before that, let me first of all appreciate those uh, young business guys from the Northeast that have collected or paid for that form for His Excellency Article. If you understand, for this presidential election. Now, the first thing is, for them to have collected that form, it has made them to be part of it. That means to say, along the line, they can tell uh, uh, His Excellency, former, former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku, that look, these are the things we are looking for. This are uh, one, two, three that are the aspirations and expectations of the people from you. That is to say that Atiku is not there as only himself, but as representing the interests of the people that collected that form for him. That is what. So, if you're talking about his health and age, ever since, how many times have you heard about Atiku? going for medical tourism he's not we our president he's not the president of the country no 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 sir i just want no no, no. he's not the president so we're not following his health trip oh, stories God. but when you become president when you have to go for a health trip it's our business because we have to be informed but he's not our president so we are not interested in what he's doing with his health and even even if he were going on such it would oh. not be news to us would it are you with me i am I know what I am saying. Okay. You allow me, I'm building a case. You allow me to learn, please. Okay. Now, we have seen a lot of aspirants now going for health tourism. In Yoruba, they always say something. Oju no I mean, I have no ti ma oju to ma ba ni kale. That is, it is in the money. That you'll be able to identify which eyes will take you from morning till night. All right? Now, if you are also talking about age, if you are talking about age, for goodness sake, today, today I met a man. It's, it's like a father to us in my neighborhood. That man is 83 years old. He still drives his car from Lagos to Ekiti. That is a man. So that is to say, the body metabolism of every individual differs. Go and bring another age mate of Atiku side by side. He might not be able to be as agile as he is. Okay. I have seen, I have seen younger guys that cannot, that cannot go on 100 meter dash as, as far as I will go. Who I am even older than with about 15 years. That is also a sign. 
This time around, we are talking about, let us put people that are really prepared in political offices. Not all those that are going there to represent some people's interest. That, okay, you, I want you to go and contest for this position. But there is somebody who has been contesting for this position because he knows that he has the temerity for that office. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make a, a sway for him. It sounds but like you're campaigning for him already. Who have been watching, who have been watching all these, all these people on the sideline. So far, so good. So far, so good. I strongly believe that Atiku, if he can, if he should get there, and then with people like us trying to put him on his toes according to the needs, aspirations of the people. Okay. I think Nigeria will move forward. Okay. One, he, he got that experience as, as the AP, as the vice president, ever since he has been upgrading himself as a gas developmental project, development act activities in the whole world, this are this Nigeria. Hmm. So what are you talking about? So I want to ask a question quickly so I can go back to Babashola. You said that people like you would put him on his toes. Where are people like you now when we have a president that you, everybody seems to be complaining about? Why are you yes, not? Pe why are people like you not putting President Buhari, the one who's still in power, on the, his toes? Yes. I will answer that now. Now, if you, I, I'm sure you will have been following me for the past years and some other people like budget and all that. There is no doubt about it that when this president was coming in, actually everybody wanted a change, but never defined that change. Never defined that change. And it is not difficult for people to not be telling him this. But with Atiku Abubakar coming in, we have are, we are defined the needs and aspirations of the people, okay. the arguments of our needs. We have defined it. And let's say, I'm sure the people that bought for for him will have made him to understand. Okay. And now he had also known that there is nothing he can do outside the people. All right. The moment he knows that, and we also know our honors, that our president is not a president of his own, but a president for the people. Okay. Then we will always be monitoring him and then be telling him at, from time to time the needs and aspirations of All the right. people. All right, because of time, let me go back to Babashala. Um, Babashala, um, let's look at, again, I'm looking at what the, the PDP um, uh, chieftain is capable of bringing to the table. Now, just as I said, um, a lot of uh, people expected Mr. President to damn the consequences for the want of a better way to describe it and, and steer the ship of Nigeria to the promised land. Now, this has not necessarily been the case. Who's to say that Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who's not been able to win for how many years, will be able to pull the kind of weight that he was even able to pull last, um, in 2019? We saw how close the call was. Um, but then the Nigeria of 2019 is not the Nigeria of 2022. Neither would it be the Nigeria of 2023. How certain is the PDP uh, that this aspirants in of course we're not talking about him as if he's been given the flag already but what can he really bring to the table that would make nigerians look in his direction okay um if i were to look at the antecedent of pdp i will tell you that uh, the pdp is not different from the apc however things can change human beings can change they can have new set of people coming into the political party to re-engineer the party and come up with a good manifesto well like i do tell people personally i am not more uh, no longer interested in the manifesto i am not interested in what you have been able to do before and what people have been able uh, what people say about you now um in 2023 if pdp actually if pdp is actually interested in uh taking over that position to any of, it, any of his candidates, it means that they need to review, to rejig the political party uh, structure. They need to do a lot of things by, uh, for example, we need to start seeing their hands. Now, they are, the political party is silent. Since, um, since 2019, hardly do we hear of PDP again. 
because it's like the opposition party has gone to sleep. The opposition party is no longer interested in what is happening to Nigerians. All they may do now is once in a while they make noise to let people know that they are still existing. If they actually want people to give them that recognition, if they actually want people to vote for that political party, they need to do more. They need to cry when people when the people are crying. Look at the look at this uh, 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 the cost of well the economy the inflation is on the high side nobody in pdp is saying anything so is that a political party that we actually want to we are actually we actually want to support for 2023 i can't even answer that question but it all depends on who they present okay. as their own candidate if they if they present a candidate if they present a candidate that is better than the candidate of apc maybe maybe right. pdp will come back to position but if not I doubt. All that remains to be seen, but I want to say thank you, Daya Kayade, uh, Babashala Degui. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. There's a lot that's going to play out in the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thank you very much. Well, all right. Well, thank you all for staying with us on the show tonight. As we wrap up for the week, we'll bring you our weekly roundup of the show, and you can be part of the conversations that we've had all through the week. But don't forget, you can watch our show's uh, replays on YouTube uh, live. Of course, you can go to Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I'm Mariana Cohn. I will see you next week on Plus Politics. I don't think that uh, we really have any crisis within the party. Uh, what we have within the party is the ambition of the two individuals that have decided to take the government hostage. Because what is about the crisis now has to do with 2023 and 2024. And you all know that the government is not planning to run for a third term, and the governor is not planning to run for any election now. But those people who have the ambition to run for 2023 and 2024 have had to take the governor hostage and pressurizing him to dissolve the party or to, to reconcile or, or harmonize the structures of the party. That what we are having is that. These people have been tried for 2023 and 2024 and tried to categorize the governor to what they call harmonization or integration. In, in respect of the APC proposed March 26 National Convention, there was already a notification letter in that regard written to, written to INEC by Buni led caretaker committee of the party which of course meets the 21 days notice as required by the law. So if they are working with that direction, then the party can still, with position of the law, go ahead with the national convention in this month of March. But however, of recent we heard about the plans of some leaders and the third party to replace the government of the state Buni with that of the Niger State counterpart, Abuba Kassoni Belu, and the party's caretaker chairman. This is according to our celebrations of Governor Rufai on China's television. Remember I said the ball is in their court? Uh -huh. Any attempt to go by this direction, no matter how smart the party leadership is, we hold the chance of APC to conduct this party national congress as planned in this month of March. We don't understand why Philip Shaibu and Obaseki will want us to change the goalposts at the middle of a match. Before they came to People's Democratic Party to seek for help, we have already conducted congresses at the world level, at the local government level, and at the state level. Officers have won election and have been met. In fact, we had aspirants who were preparing for Congress to be candidates of our party few weeks to our election before we had to speak to our people. Even some of them threatened to go to court. You follow the incident. 
In fact, when Faisal Shah made that prediction, today Faisal Shah has been vindicated. And that's why Governor Zawike had to apologize to Shomele. Because Shomele told him, look, this man, you are doing everything to help. You don't know him. After helping him, you will understand who he truly is. Today, Shomele has been vindicated. Well, let me just say that to a very large extent, Soludo has a personality that is different uh, from uh, and an experience that is different from uh, the experience of so many governor, governors in the country. Uh, because of his unique uh, background as former governor for the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria. And so he's an economist, he's a first class, uh, you know, um, uh, graduate uh, from the University of Nigeria and Super in Economics. Uh, he is somebody that has also received back a lot of international awards from international institutions because of what, uh, you know, uh, of his achievements as governor of CBN. And so there is a lot of, a lot at stake in the Soludo, uh, uh, you know, Soludo as a governor of uh, Anambra State. And, um, and, and what is critical is that a lot more people, uh, if, if, if Soludo fails, then it will be difficult for people, for Nigerians to begin to make a case for people with the kind of pedigree that uh, Soludo has.